Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. So, Chianti. That's right, we're going traditional here. Pizza, pasta, Italy, Tuscany, Chianti. Chianti has really been a very interesting thing to watch. You know, in the 1950s it really started getting going again. There was only four or five producers. The wines were kind of getting junky. Everything else was sold by bulk. There was uh, Antonori and uh, you know a couple other families making Chianti. It got really resurgenced in the late 70s. And now today, Chianti's in a very interesting place. In the mid 80s to 90s, to mid 90s, it was a very popular grape. And it's really kind of starting to lose a little bit of soul. And the reason I say that is, besides all the grapes that you're able to use, you're now able to use Merlot and other grapes like that in making Chianti. Chianti, a lot of people think, is 100% Sangiovese, but that's just not true. Colorino or Cagnolo or Merlot or even white grapes like Trebbiano and Malvasia can be put into making an official DOCG, which is the governing body, Chianti Classico or Chianti. So, Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize what the grape is in their bottle of Chianti, and, uh, and that sometimes seems to be a problem. I'm very interested to see where this lineup of Chiantis goes, because these are big-name Chiantis. I've had a lot of people ask me to do Chianti, and that's why I picked some big names, the ones that people have been specifically asking for. Again, miserable day here in New Jersey. Nothing that we can do with the heat episode. I'm sorry for all those guys. Before we taste the Chiantis, Tim F., Great catch on the Family Guy reference. Real good call in the comments section. Also, before we do anything else, I'm going to give you my lock of the week in the NFL. You know, Sunday we do a lot of football here on Wine Library TV. My lock of the week, Ravens. 21, Raiders 7. The birds are going to kill those Raiders. The Raiders may be the worst team in football. 21-7, Ravens over the Raiders. I won't make any predictions in the Jets-Patriots game, but I think you all know where I want it to go. I will be at the Jets game, so if you see me in the parking lot, shout out my name. I'll come over. So, enough of those things. Let's talk about the wines. Bonfi, 2003 Chianti Classico Reserva. Again, Chianti has long been a go-to inexpensive wine that we've sold for years. When I first got into the wine business, we sold obscene amounts of Chianti, along with uh, Corvo, red and white, you might remember that, and the Mouton Cadet, red and white, which is a French wine. Those were like the go-to everyday wines. The Australian Shirazes and all these Spanish wines were really not doing anything. California Cabs were first, and little, you know, Bogles and things of that nature were just starting to do their thing. So it was really, Chianti was huge. I mean, just everybody drank it. Um, and now you, I've just seen a big dip off, so this should be a lot of fun. Good color on this Chianti, you know, nice purple, not too bad. Classic rustic nose. I mean, this is why I think Chiantis have fallen out of favor. You know, the Sangiovese, they're very more old world, they're more traditional. You get a lot more soil, earth, green tones. And today's palette with the Australian and Spanish wines are all about fruit bombs. You know, instant gratification. You know what I'm talking about. And this could be another reason why the Chiantis have fallen out of favor. This is very thin and hollow. A little bit of cherry on the mid-palate, which is nice, but it's very watered down. It's, um, it's got really no taste whatsoever besides the cherry and a little bit of dirt and brick. Um, very thin. No finish whatsoever. This is a horrible effort by Bonfi, which is a great producer of wine, but this 03 Chianti Classical Reserve is not something I can recommend at $13.99, which is what I think it sells for. It's a complete ripoff, and uh, you know, and I'm going to pass. I'm going to go 82 points on this. I just can't see uh, any reason for buying this wine whatsoever, and it's actually a big selling Chianti for us, so that might not have been the best way to go, but Wine Library TV. Canaccia, Acceretto, Chianti Classico, 2002. Very small producer. This one's 90% Sangiovese, 10% Merlot. And again, a lot of the traditionalists are really upset with the Merlot inclusion. And now people are pushing for Syrah, and we're hearing that may get through at the DOCG. So they're really kind of, you know, losing their sense of place. And that's really the concern of traditionalists with wine. And I understand where you're coming from. That one day all these wines from all over the world are all going to taste the same. And that would be sad, because obviously, you know, you want to have a sense of place. I think we all enjoy eating foods from different parts of the world. And I look at wine like food, and so that would be sad. So I do hope some of the laws strengthen up and don't allow this. Even though I'm a new world thinker, there is a little place for tradition, at least a little bit, right? Now this is a much more interesting nose. You know, very uh, asparagus driven, a little bit of hint of uh, 
black currant, you know, very nice. Actually, um, a little bit of tree bark, which is nice. Yeah, nice, nice wine. Mm. Wow, much better effort. Same price range as the Bonfi. Um, just a much smoother wine, more complete, a little silkier, more complex, more structure to it. Um, I'm not really tasting the world, New World fruit of the Merlot. This is just pure, delicious Sangiovese, which at its finest is very, very tannic, but complete, very firm, very tight, you know, like, like an athlete. You know, it's just really well-made, structured, nice hits of cinnamon on the aftertaste, which I'm really enjoying, and I'm a big cinnamon fan. If you like that flavor profile, this definitely has it. This is a really good Chianti. Nice firm, and this is just great. This would go great with any Italian dish. You know, just a perfect match. And for this price point, I really enjoy this wine. It's a winner. I'm going to give it a 89 plus, 90 points. In that range, I really enjoy that wine. Really good. It's a wine I've enjoyed quite a bit. 2097, excuse me, 2001 and 1997 of this wine were some of my favorite Chiantis. This is the Antonori 2003 Pepoli Single Vineyard which is a, a premium Chianti Classical from these guys. Um, really nice wine. A little bit more in that $18 range. Um, real dark color, really coming off. Um, really dark, dark, dark color for a Chianti. Much darker than, uh, than what we're used to. trying here folks you know not giving me much of the nose whatsoever the only thing I'm getting is a little bit of mud which is you know a little bit of a dirty kind of muddy you know maybe like your sweatpants after a football game in the mud you know that mud smell thirteen five in alcohol thirteen point five Nice mouthfeel, you know, it's silky and it's smooth, which is, you know, they could be getting really smart here. This is a very tricky wine. It's very silky and very smooth, which, you know, for a beginner might enjoy, but there's nothing else going on there. I really get no flavor whatsoever. The structure's not there. No mid-palate, that transition flavor. None. The finish is already gone. Um, definitely not good as the Ceretto that we had before. Let's go 86 points on this. Um, I don't know, I love the color. I love the silkiness. It has a very nice mouthfeel. It's really smooth, which could trick people to being a good wine. But there's no flavor. There's nothing interesting going on here. I mean, what is this? This is like drinking liquid. I mean, there's just no reason or rationale for doing that. I'm down on this wine. I'm going to say pass on that. Finally, very famous stuff. The Rafino 2001 Reserva Gold Label. I know we give this away. This is probably our biggest selling Chianti in the store. I think we sell for 27, 28 bucks. You know, it's as high as 35. Um, in every restaurant, in every place, this is a go-to wine. Tons and tons of people drink this wine. Again, great, great color, like the Antonori. trend here that's really interesting to me. Very similar to the Antonori. Silky smooth, but what is it really bringing? The tannins are there. There's a little more tannin structure than the Antonori, but this is a little bit disappointing. Again, very smooth, but I'm not getting a lot of flavor whatsoever. It's a 2001 Reserve. I mean, the wine is more than aged. It's, um, it's not showing anything interesting. It's basic. You know, it's basic. It's 3 plus 3 equals 6. There's just no interesting math going on there. I'm just really not inspired by this effort for its lack of creativity. You know, they just made a solid bottle of wine, but what the hell, for 30 bucks, come on, do something. I mean, this is a poor effort. I mean, on its own, not taking price into consideration to score it, I'm gonna give this an 87, but I'm not even happy about doing that. I mean, just the fakeness of the silky smoothness is what's tricking it to be an 87. But I'm not going for it, I'm gonna say pass. You know, we had a Family Guy reference yesterday, which made me wonder. I got a real great question of the day today. What is your favorite TV show? 
You know, we're learning a lot about each other. You know a lot about me. Big Jets fan, all these other things. I like Family Guy. But what's your favorite TV show? The one you're watching now and your favorite of all time? Mine might be Incredible Hulk, Dukes of Hazard, something like that. Other than that, this is Gary Vaynerchuk drinking crappy Chianti so you don't have to.